Shades of the Science podcast with your girl and with an Hello everyone and welcome to episode 71 of the Root of the Sons podcast with your girl and with an E. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. It's so great to have you. And if you are a regular, thank you once again for tuning in. It's always great to have our regulars on. If you're new, remember you can like and subscribe on whatever platform you listen to your podcasts on. Let's get into today's episode. So for the past three years, I've been a teaching assistant for the University of KwaZulu-Natal. In the process, I've had the pleasure of teaching some really amazing students. And I thought it's only fitting that for this month, you are scientists, I talk to a few of them. So today you get to hear some conversations with Tembi, Tabile and Ndogoso. My first guest is Tabile Ngumalo, a South African. She's a fourth year plant pathology student. In this episode, we learn that in high school, she had no idea what science meant. She was simply encouraged by her teachers to pursue it because she had good grades. It wasn't until her second year in university that she realized what she was doing. She, she explains the field of plant pathology to us and also discusses her current honors project and her future aspirations. Let's take a listen. Hi, Tabile. Welcome to the show. Hi, Anne. How are you? I'm really excited to have you on today. I'm very much okay. Thank you. And how are you? Um, perfect. I'm perfect. Okay. So, Tabile, to kick things off, please introduce us. So, who is Tabile? What is she currently doing? And what are you currently, where are you currently based? Okay. Um, Tabile is just a young girl from South Africa, and I'm originally from South Africa. Uh, I'm 23 in age, and I'm doing plant pathology. Before we get into what you do in terms of plant pathology, I want us to go to the beginning. So when you think of young Tabile back in the day, how did she end up in science? Is this something that you've always aspired to do? Were there people who you looked up to or did it something sort of just kind of happen? What is your story? Okay, um, honestly speaking, being in science, first, I didn't know what does it mean to be in science. It was just a thing that um, back in high school, when the teachers saw potential in you, they'll be like, okay, your grades mm. are good, then you can do great. And that went on for like almost my whole high school life until my second year at university. That is when um, I realized that being mm. in science, it's more than just cool. It's actually interesting. It's fun. Mm. You get to explore a lot of things, learn a lot. And that actually inspired me to be in science because at some point like at my first year when I applied for plant pathology like <laughs> I totally had no clue what it was all about I know I knew actually that it was about agriculture I would study plants but I didn't know <laughs> yeah. about until second year where I did plant pathology two and four there was more like an introductory module which introduced me to what exactly plant pathology is it's when now I realized that it's actually cool and like, like it's amazing. So basically, yeah, uh, yeah, that's how I end up in science. I love your honesty, Tamile, because I think many of us just come into science. Like you said, we just, you're smart. So you're like, okay, go do science. But, and then also in undergrad, you just do all the basic things and you take a degree. You don't really know what that degree is. You know, but because you are smart yes. and it's science, you're like, ah, let me let me get in. So um, when you find when you when you say that you realize like it's actually interesting, was it because of how it was being taught to you? Was it a particular lecture? Like, what was that moment where you were like, OK, this is something that I want to do, like where that light bulb rang? Because I think there's always that thing where you eventually like, oh, OK okay, this is what I'm doing. So was there a specific moment or an instance or an example for you where that light bulb finally came on? Um, well, I would say it's most of the modules I was doing second year. They sort of um, 
put the meaning on plants, on what actually plants are, uh, how they operate, which is more like they're like human beings. And that are the most interesting parts because basically plant birth um, is about um, the science behind plants not just plants being plants as we see them like the colors showed by different plants so um i would say it's hps 200 and 22 it would actually um showed me how my degree um it actually showed me how interesting my degree was because yeah they put a lot of meanings in so many plants that were around that you around me that time and yeah Oh, okay. That's great. I'm going to take that win because AGPS 200 is one of the modules that I was <laughs> tutoring you for so um, or demonstrating you for. So I'm glad that me and Professor Dindo helped you put in um, that understanding. So for the yes. people who don't know, AGPS 200 is an agri- um, introduction to agricultural production module. And and I think plant pathology, It was. it's also an introduction to plant pathology module in second year where all of those concepts come in and I'm sure Mm. it's also because in undergrad you just do sorry in first year you just do very basic science modules and then only in second year you start applying that agriculture and I'm glad that the light switched on for you and it finally made sense okay so now you're in your fourth year you are majoring in plant pathology. For somebody who has no idea what that even means, <laughs> who's never heard of this degree, um, in in your understanding, how would you explain what you are majoring? What is plant pathology? Well, in my case, yes, I'm an undergrad because I haven't graduated, but lucky enough, uh, when you graduate uh, at fourth year level, you come up with an honors. So this year I'm doing my fourth year, and which is basically honors, and I'm particularly focusing on plant virology because there are quite a lot of sections under plant pathology. There is bacteriology section, and there is plant virology, so which is basically dealing with viruses that infect different plants. So since uh, I'm mm. more focusing on plant viruses, I find it quite a lot interesting because... Viruses are viruses. It's the end, whether in infect an in animal infecting, plant infecting, in, or human infecting viruses. So yeah, this year I'm just doing my honors project and I'm focusing on viruses, which is quite a lot interesting because I can somehow link them to the current study, uh, which is of COVID nineteen. Since I'm studying viruses. Mm. I'm also taking mm. some information on how this virus is emerged. Um, yeah. No, I understand. So you're kind of um, you're kind of applying, even though you're working on plants and not humans, yes. the application and the understanding is similar. And you can now understand because this pandemic is new to everybody. So you kind of have that edge <laughs> than <laughs> most of us in terms of understanding the science behind the viruses. So um, you said for your fourth year, you're working on a fourth year project for your honors year Um would you mind, I know it might not be 100% finalized because it's still the beginning of the year, but do you have an idea on what viruses you're going to be looking at or what plants or the basic gist of what potentially your project is going to be about? Well, yeah, currently we've started transplanting the tobacco plants, but even though my virus, like the viruses that I'll be using, because it won't be a virus infecting one plant. It'll be actually a virus infecting uh, hydrangea and cleaver plants. But I'm using okay. tobacco plant because tobacco, like our Prof. Kuba would say, it's TMV, which is tobacco mosaic virus. Uh, it's the mother mm-hmm. of plant virology. Like most plant viruses can infect tobacco. So also in my project, I would use oh. tobacco is um, a host plan to see if I can propagate my virus, the virus that infects hydrangea and fever on the very same tobacco. So yeah, I'll be doing that uh, and then I'll examine if I can find it like 
do some lab work to see how did it go oh fantastic sounds really exciting um it's quite interesting i just learned something new uh, that you know what tobacco is the mother or viruses so thank you for teaching me and i'm sure everybody else who's listening this new piece of information yeah. <laughs> this new piece of information <laughs> yeah but not ba- but not basically tobacco i'll say tmv tobacco mosaic virus which is which is actually a virus that infects tobacco oh okay oh you said yeah. the, the virus itself not the tobacco plant yes. the virus itself yes. oh okay no i understand i i got a little bit confused there all right no um all the best with this project i know it's tricky now because you guys have progressed from um in person learning to to uh online learning and i think it must be re- okay well rather let me not assume Rather, let me ask for you, um, in your final year, how has that transition been for you going from in-person lectures to, you know, these online lectures and whatnot? Has that affected the way you work or was has this been a positive experience for you? Um, well, it has been really hard considering the fact that actually this um, online learning started last year. Mm. Um Mm. And then it's even worse this year because there are modules which are like field work where we have to go to yeah. farms, different farms, learn some, some lot of things. And then now we can't do that because they can't allow us to come in. So, yeah, it's kind of hard, I would say, because we'll graduate next year without doing some of the stuff because we can do them online, but it's not the same with in content. Uh, yeah, so, yeah it's kind of affected, and affected us in a very negative way. Yeah, so yeah, it is yeah. what it is. What can you say? But yeah, we are adjusting. No, I'm sure um, it, it's been difficult. I honestly, personally, cannot imagine going through undergraduate level online. Like, yo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, my heart really goes out to all of you guys and um when you when you guys graduate because you will you must be very proud of yourself that you managed to come through in a pandemic and i think that's important that you know you are doing all of this work and you are thriving no matter how hard it is i mean nobody said it's going to be easy but you are thriving and i'm sh- and i and i'm sure even with the speed bumps it will end in congratulations <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Tabile, uh, as we're talking about how you're going to finish um, the end of this year and graduate next year, what are some of your future aspirations when you think about the future? Where do you see yourself? Um, uh, can you explain to me um, sort of the ideal goal for you? Well, at the beginning of the year, I was like, I want to do my honors, graduate, and then go look for a job. But now that has changed a bit. Um, I now want to go for masters. I want to do masters in plant virology. Like I want to know more about viruses. Yeah, I'm so now interested in. I want to mm. know quite a lot about them. So yeah, I want to do my masters next year. Oh, that's great! You are welcome to the postgraduate squad. <laughs> <laughs> and you. I love how um, your you doing this type of research has opened your mind to want to know more. And I think that's the beauty of science. It's always the curiosity, the the questions, and wanting to find answers for the next thing. So this is obviously only just the beginning in your honors, and who knows what will come when you pursue your masters so all the best and um as we come to the end of this interview um you know the whole reason why i had you on the show is because i want to amplify uh the voices of young upcoming scientists in these different fields and i hope you realize that for you you are an inspiration not only to younger people and i'm sure even just your peers so i hope you remember that and you don't forget it and you keep on aspiring to all of your many many goals and for somebody who's like wow tabula i want to be just like you 
<laughs> what would you say to them? Uh, or even to when you think, when you reflect back about younger Tabile from like, let's say four years ago or later, what sort of piece of advice would you give her? Um, I would say people shouldn't be scared of science. Like in high schools or back in the days, people would say science is hard. Um, you're smart if you're doing mm. science. Science is nice. Science is um, interesting. It's get to put a lot of meaning in so much different things. So I would say if you feel like you can do science, just go for it. It's actually nice. It's amazing. You will love it, definitely. So, yeah, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be scared of um, science. Science is so, so, so much interesting. Oh, I love that. I love that. And uh, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me. I really, really enjoyed our chat. Thank you. Likewise. Next up is Tembi Siwe Dube, also known as Tembi, who is originally from Zimbabwe, but currently resides and studies in South Africa. She is pursuing a bachelor's degree in animal science. We learned that she was inspired by her father's passion for livestock care. This piqued her interest in studying animals in order to assist him. She discovered that animal science was a degree she needed to pursue after conducting a quick Google search. She explains to us what animal science is all about and also talks to us about her future plans and aspirations. Let's take a listen. Hi, Timby. Welcome to the show. Hi, Anne. How are you doing? I'm so great. Thank you for coming on today and for sharing your story. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. So now before we get into anything, Tembi, please just introduce yourself. So who is Tembi? What are you currently doing? Where are you based? Uh, where are you originally from? Just something short and sweet for everybody to get to know you. Okay. Um, my name is Tembi Dube. I am I come from Zimbabwe, and right now I'm at the University of KwaZulu Natal, um, doing my bachelor science degree in agriculture, which I'm majoring in animal and poultry science. Um, I stay in Peter Marius Beck, that's where the campus is, and briefly, that's all about myself. And besides my studies, I also like cooking watching TV series and documentaries. Oh, awesome. I love to cook. We should share some recipes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for that awesome introduction. Uh, it's really good to know that away from the science as well, you also have a life. But just coming back to the sciences, I think it's pretty interesting for us to find out what your story is. What is the root of the science? Is it something that you always wanted to do? Or was it something that kind of just happened and then you're like, yeah, I'm here. Let me just continue. So what's your story? Um, it was kind of like something that I really wanted to do. So uh Firstly, it was mm. how my dad was so passionate about uh, taking care of his livestock. And so I grew up seeing him um, treating his animals, feeding them, taking care of them, maybe moving them to maybe a greener pastures, maybe if there's less feed and stuff mm. like that. So I got interested and I, I thought it would be interesting for me to like study animals so that maybe one day I can help him out because although he's doing it at a subsistence farming level, but I wish, I mm. wish I can help him. So that really motivated me. Like it was something that he was passionate about that ended up being my passion. Wow. That's so beautiful. So um, it was the influences of being at home and your dad owning uh, this livestock and then you're like okay this is something that you want mm. to do so you said you're originally from zim right yes. zimbabwe um how do yes. you end up yes. in south africa studying a bachelor of animal science animal science um you know um okay i was uh, fascinated about like really pursuing this um anything to do with animals. So I just went to the internet, started looking for um, animal degrees and I came across animal science. And thereafter, I then started like looking for um, universities, universities to go to. So I just thought, of, okay, let me try something new. Let me go out of my comfort zone and apply in South Africa. Mm. So I applied in Northwest, uh, in KZN, 
like in the Dalit church, of course, in the towel. And I can't remember the third one, but I got places in all, but I just had to select um, UKZN. Oh, okay, cool. That's that's a brilliant story. Thank you for that. I love how you said you just were like, okay, I want to do an animal science degree. Let me just um, <laughs> type on Google. So thank God for Google. So it was, you didn't know that this degree actually, actually existed, hey? Because it's, I have never met a lot of people who study animal science. I, I just Googled it, as I said. So I also didn't know like which part exactly which path exactly to take so that's why i had to like just say animal degrees so there was animal science there's also veterinary science but for yeah veterinary for some science, reason i just yeah. chose um animal science i like that you took the path less traveled because i think most people always assume if you want to do something animal related veterinary science is a way to go but you've mm-hmm. just shone a light on a on a discipline of science that not many people know that it's something that you do so just quickly um run us through what what do you what what are some things that you study if somebody is interested in this degree what are some things that you learn um and so far in your journey that you've learned or in in summary um that makes up animal science okay um so animal science really looks at the science and business of producing livestock animals so like your cattle sheep uh, gold, swine, and poultry, and how how to solve problems associated with the livestock production and management. So it also looks at uh, companion animals, like their nutrition, their um, welfare, and their care. So really, like animal science, like com- comprised of like four divisions. Like you can, we are doing our mm. animal health, our animal nutrition, um, animal genetics, and animal physiology and production. So all our bases of science, our biochemistry, maths, mm. physics, and stuff, they all like our fundamentals on those topics. Wow, that's so interesting. I'm learning something. Um, I'm learning something as well. So it encompasses many disciplines of science into one. And uh, it's it's quite fascinating because I used to have friends in undergrad who used to do animal science, but I never really understood what they did. I just thought, ah. Oh, they just to raise cattle <laughs> or something. So it's really like raising yeah. cattle or um, livestock for like production. Oh, okay, great. And also you, you mentioned that there's also the, the management aspect of it as well. So that's also really yes. good in terms of farm management. No, thank you so much for that um, that little description for us and just teaching us something new. So Timbi, where do you currently see yourself? You are now at fourth year, which is your honors level, right? What are some of your aspirations after this? Because after this, yes. you graduate. So do you want to continue further studying or do you have some other ideas of where you kind of want to go with your life? Okay, um, currently I want to continue with my study. I want to do my master's, but um, maybe at the same time, I would want to look for a job because um, I feel like I... I want to experience how it is like working, like applying my knowledge on the job and getting mm, mm. getting information about how things are run and the latest technologies that are used in animal science and stuff like that. So I feel like I I want to do my master's at the same time. I really want to get a job so that I I become well versed with really what I'm doing. Mm, no, I I completely understand, and I hope um, when this chapter. <laughs> is over and you continue your, your next chapter you get into something that is uh, that you enjoy and also I love the fact that you want to pursue your studies further we need more people doing doing that mm-hmm. um, so Tembi the whole basis okay. of this um, talk this month is that um, we want to amplify the voices of young people in these different STEM disciplines but also just to remind you guys that you are an inspiration to so many people because I'm sure there are many people who are like wow Tembi is really amazing I hope you know that that there are people who look up to you and um, so I just wanted to ask you with, with everything that you've learned 
learned so far, even though it might not seem like it's a lot, but to somebody else, it's a lot. What advice would you give to somebody who is motivated by your story or aspires to do something similar? Okay, first and foremost, you have to go for your dream. Do what you want, do what you love, because whenever you meet like obstacles, whether whether it's hard or not, you will still go through anything because that's what you love, that's what you like. So you will conquer everything. So yeah, that's what I would say. Oh, fantastic. Short and sweet, straight to the point. <laughs> um, Tembi, it's been such a pleasure having you on. Um, I wish you all of the best and um, in everything that you do from now and in the future and just keep on working hard and you know killing it uh thank you thank you so much no problem thank you so much lastly we have Ntogo Zomkabela from South Africa she's currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in agricultural plant science with a major in crop science in this episode she admits that when she was younger she was unsure about her future career when she was 16 she started growing a vegetable garden which sparked her interest in pursuing a degree in agriculture she tells us more what agriculture science is all about and also her research projects. Finally, we talked about her future goals and also how she's been enjoying this online learning. Let's take a listen. Hi, Togozo. Welcome to the show. Hi, Anne. Thank you so much for having me. It is a great pleasure. I am so excited to have you on and for us to get to know more about you. So first things first, please give us a brief introduction. Who is Ndogozo? Um, where are you currently based and what are you currently doing? Just in brief. Okay, well, my name is Ndogozo Kavela, and I am a 22-year-old who is currently based in Peter Maritzburg in Durban, South Africa. Um, I'm actually originally from Johannesburg and I've lived there for like 16 years and then we relocated here um to pmb which is where i reside right now um i am currently studying at ukzn in peter Maritzburg, and i am pursuing a degree in agricultural plant science and i am majoring in crop science Oh, perfect. I love that. We're going to get into more of that a little bit later. So Ndokozo, um, you you gave us a brief introduction that you were originally from Johannesburg, South Africa, and then you moved here. So mm-hmm. just riding mm-hmm. on that wave, let's take the steps all the way back. So how does young Ndokozo get into science? Mm-hmm. Is this something that you've always wanted to do? Or were, pe- were there some people who you looked up to? Or is it something that you kind of like oh I'm just here I'm rolling with it so what is your story yeah um so actually young Dawaza was very confused she didn't really know what she wanted to do um I I'm someone who's very easily impressed so if I see something that I just like I want to do it so you know when I was younger I wanted to be things like a flight attendant or a doctor or a vet or anything yeah I I was very indecisive Mm -hmm. um and I mean that's the Libra in me Libras are thought are known to be very indecisive so yeah um that was me when I was younger but it was more like when I turned about 16 while I was still living in Joburg that my interest in actually wanting to do agricultural science actually started and basically my nature is someone who likes to DIY, who likes to do things herself. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times when mm-hmm. I see something and I mm-hmm. see something that I could potentially start for myself or create myself or make myself, um, yeah, I, I instead of buying that thing, I'm just like, okay, let me just go back home, research on how I can make this thing and actually try and make it. So for me, um, food was one of that and specifically produce so stuff like you know things that you see on shops in in shops you know the vegetables and stuff like that and I had this fantasy of having my own garden and you know um when it's like supper time before some supper time I go outside and like pick all the produce that I need to get like for me I didn't want to I wanted to go away from grocery shops and just to have my own garden and just go and harvest it and then come and cook it in. Uh, I don't know why. It's just who I am. I love. <laughs> and then, um, so I started a little bit when I was 16. I would actually collect a lot of fruit. I mean, 
a lot of seeds. And yeah, for me, eating of fruit was less about the fruit and more about the seed. Um, So I'd, I'd literally collect the seed and I knew the basics, which was the seed must go in the soil. That's literally all I knew. Um, and obviously that was very unsuccessful. I literally had a 100% unsuccessful rate at germinating. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that's where it all started. Like I was so curious, instead of being like discouraged by the fact that I'm not producing anything, I would be curious and be like, you know, um, why isn't it growing um, and stuff like that. And then when I started being in matric, um, I, I sort of was able to actually start germinating things, but then I started having issues of pests and oh my gosh, they were a nightmare, especially aphids. I hated mm. aphids. Oh my goodness. They would literally come and destroy my whole little garden that I had. Um, you know, it was so frustrating. And I think that's when my whole curiosity and agriculture actually started and that's how I made the decision to actually do agricultural plant science. Wow that's so interesting that this is something that you were doing even at such a young age and especially with being in Johannesburg in the city um, the fact that you're so ingenuitive mm-hmm. and you were like, I'm going to grow my own food um, is actually mm-hmm. pretty brilliant. And, yeah. you know, that kind of, that bug grew. <laughs> and I say bug, like, you know, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> that you had a face problem. But um, <laughs> I, I love that story. That's quite interesting that, you know, you actually went for your dream. Mm-hmm. I know that... It, most young people, when you think of agriculture science, they're like, oh my gosh, are you going to be a farmer? Do you get that a lot? <laughs> mm, I do. And I sort of hate it sometimes when people think that because I'm like, agricultural plant science is so much more to it than just being a farmer. Yeah. Agricultural plant science, science, it is so much, it's so difficult. It's not as simple as just planting things around like yeah that yeah that's I usually get that question a lot and I'm just like no yeah not that simple (laughs) (laughs) I used to get oh so you just play with mud and I'm like no (laughs) it's not like that (laughs) it's not like that okay so so you said that um agricultural science is 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 way more than that so in your understanding for Mm. somebody who doesn't know how would you explain what you do in being at more than just playing with mud yeah so agricultural plant science in general i see it as being a doctor for plants i see it as being sort of like a plant whisperer you need to be able to go to the field and you see an issue and you need to be able to identify what that issue is so i the degree and cultural plant plant science actually prepares you for that it teaches you so much on you know factors that affect the um optimum growth um, of certain crops. Yeah, it just teaches you about the environment of crops and what crops need to thrive and, you know, the important things that a crop or a plant needs in order to produce certain things and prove the quality of that produce as well. So it's it's very, very, very science-based because, for example, with soil science, because that's one module that you do as well. It's 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 like that's one complicated module because you need to learn. There's so much f- mm. physics involved with that. There's so much chemistry involved with that. There's so much biology involved with that. So there's mm. it's 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 mm. very complex. And yeah, um, that's what agriculture plant science. With the major crop science, um, for me, it's more like studying industrial crops. It's less about the cash crops, sort of like horticultural crops, but more on the cash cash crops. So an example of a cash crop would be like wheat, sugar, um, the sugar crop, um, cotton, you know, um, anything that you're able to can be used for other products to like an, a value adding product and can be exported. So that's what crop science is. is. Yeah, no, that's a great explanation. That's a great explanation. And um, you mentioned that you are, well, for, I didn't, I didn't say earlier, but you are in your fourth year now, um, which is honors level. 
um, just before you you graduate. It's almost there. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> It's almost there. It's almost there. And you are majoring in crop science. Yes. So I know, I don't know if this is a bit too early to ask, but um, what crop are you working on for your honors project? Because in honors level, you mm-hmm. have to work on a, a big mm-hmm. project in order for you to pass. Yeah. Um, I know it might be a bit too early for you to explain the details, but what crop are you working on? Um, okay, so the crop I'm working on is eucalyptus, and eucalyptus is basically a huge tree or important tree, industrial tree um, in the forestry industry because it, it it deals with making um, paper mostly and furniture, and apparently even some um, pharmaceutical products, which I I, I'm, 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 I don't really know as of yet more about that, but yeah, apparently that's what's being done. Um, so that's the crop I'm doing. That's, the crop. That's really, really great. And I um, I wish you all of the best with your um, fourth year project. It sounds mm. like it's going to be quite a show. So just in terms of us like, still talking about school, I know that now <laughs> everything has moved online. So how are you handling the mm. online transition from, you know, at least you mm. lived the going to classes and whatnot. So for you, how has this transition been, especially? I was actually telling my brother today and I was just saying that I actually miss going to um, live lectures. And this is actually the first time I'm actually feeling this way throughout the whole lockdown. But, you know, throughout the whole um, sort of lockdown regulation mm. situation. Um, I actually enjoyed it. I think it's because I'm an introvert and, you know, we like our like to be at home. So, yeah, I actually enjoyed it a lot. And if anything, I think it, it, it helped me a lot with mm. um, my studies because I sort of got comfortable with asking questions. I don't know why, but if I was confused in certain situations or with certain concept I'm not afraid to um you know ask a question in class right now I think it's because we, we don't see each other so it's all right with that and also you know I'm I also am able to ask a lot of questions with the lecturers as well and also I really like the fact that it's it's do things at your own time um so mm-hmm. I love the fact that I was able to have more control of my time in a way because there are some lectures which were pre recorded and then posted on mm. Moodle. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm able to say that. But yeah, they were um, posted on an online platform. And some of them, obviously, I'd have to be live at that lecture. Well, um, uh, it's it's a live mm. lecture, as in it's a Zoom meeting lecture. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've loved it. I really have. I just love having, being in control of my own time, doing things at my own mm. time. And yeah, I, I haven't struggled at all. That's so interesting. I, I like that for you, it has worked, you know, because I've spoken to other students and they're like, oh my God, and I hate it. I I hate the fact that I can't ask the lecture <laughs> questions and, you know, or I hate the fact that I can't yeah. um, talk with other people. So I think, like you said, that it's very important, depending on the type of person mm-hmm. that you are, Some people thrive in different situations. So it's quite interesting for me to get your take. And Mm -hmm. when you put it like that, it makes a lot of sense. And I hope a lot of people who had that, um, who are a bit shy, kind of were able to open up and were able to gain from this. So, you know, in every situation, it's a blessing Mm -hmm. to others Mm -hmm. and it's not to other people. So I'm glad for you it's been a positive experience. Although now you're (laughs) like, okay, I'm ready to go back. (laughs) I'm ready to go back. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I I completely understand. Okay. As we are coming to the end of this interview, I wanted to ask you, so what are some of your future aspirations? You are now doing fourth year where you're about, you're going to, when you finish, you graduate. Yeah. So what is the ideal plan? Do you aspire to continue further with your studies or you're like, "Mm, it's been great. I want to do something else. Mm. Um, so what is what is your <laughs> idea and where do you see yourself in future? So I don't really want to further it 
um, right now. I don't want to further my edu education right now. Instead, I would love to actually be able to go into these industrial clubs and yeah. experience like the live production system that takes place there i i just i really want to do that and not just in south africa but mm. also in other um very um big producing countries as well like china um and india and all of those other places so that's something that i really want to do but um i think the sort of job or the sort of job situation that i'd like to see myself in is just um, in a position where I'm doing a lot of consulting. So I'm um, just going out there and just helping people solve their problems um, with, when it comes to agriculture. Um, but also, I'd also like to be in like the an management aspect of agriculture as well, to be able to manage these huge industrial farms um, as well. But I also really like to carry on with research as well not too much but i do want to be a part yeah. of the research community and i specifically want to be part of the you know organic um movement the regenerative movement um, the no till you know i just want to be a part of that and just increase as much information as mm. much knowledge and scientific findings as possible so that you know, we can go towards actually practicing these things at a more larger scales, scale, because, I mean, these things are important. We need to um, conserve and take care of our planet. So and agriculture is known as one of the um, practices which are actually depleting the biodiversity in um yeah, the biodiversity in plants and organisms. Um, so I, I just want to be part of that research. I think for me, the most important thing as well is that I also have my own business, my own farm, not just working for other people. And um, But I would like to be able to... Um, participate in the in, um, crop in industry as well and be, you know, participate in exports as well. And yeah, specifically, I would love to be a part of cotton production as well. So I'm hoping I'll be able to do that as well. But yeah, a lot of my aspirations are very, um, you know, practical based. That's less scientific and more practical, but I definitely do not want to cancel out science at all. I definitely do want to be a part of that community as well. So, yeah, um, that's my aspirations. Oh, that's great. I love how you say that you want to be in the field and in the sector. And I think there's a great deal, uh, a need rather, for more young female Black um, people, mm -hmm. players mm -hmm. in these type of spaces because mm -hmm. um, I know there's a huge monopoly in terms of the commercial farmers being predominantly white. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, a need, yeah. Yeah. there's a need for for younger people to get into farming. And I think we, we touched on this earlier where, when when, we, when you say you're doing agricultural science, there's that notion like, ugh, mm. it's not cool. So if you can, if you can have more people <laughs> in it and who are making it really exciting and showing people that, hey, yeah. it's really cool. So I, I like all of the ideas now and, and I wish you all of the best. And I'm sure you're going to so do much. it and you're going to do it well. <laughs> and if you, oh, the, the thing mm -hmm. with research is it's always going to be there. So when you want to come back, mm -hmm. you can definitely, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can definitely come back. So just go for your dreams and yeah. yeah and keep on inspiring people um, in the process because I already you are. And I mean, yeah. that's why you are here because you are an inspiration <laughs> to many. I don't think, I don't know if you realize mm. it, but you are. <laughs> and um, with that being said, I wanted to ask you then uh, if somebody is listening and they're like, oh my word, I want to be like you or they aspire to, you, or what would you say to a younger you? 16 year old busy playing in the garden what advice would you give to to a person who's listening i think i'd say the cliche which is you know sort of don't give up on chasing your dream um like your dream and your passion can take you so much further than where um 
just a simple degree can take you. Like sometimes there are cases where we do certain degrees because our parents want us to do it um, and they don't take us that far. But I believe that following your passion and following your dream will take you like places, like far places. So I guess I'd say don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt your dreams. Follow your dreams. Um, love your de- dreams. Um and also always stay curious and don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't be afraid to be wrong, um, especially in science. We, we learn from mistakes in science. That's how we actually learn. Um, mistakes broaden our sort of um, perspective in things. We know like with mistakes, we, we know, OK, this doesn't work. So what actually does work? You know, it always has that sort of like um you want to know more sort so, sort of thing. So, you know, don't be afraid of making any mistakes um, and just enjoy the process of while well. always cultivate a positive mindset. Um, and yeah, don't forget about your mental health as well because that can affect a lot of things as well. Um, but yeah, those are the sort of advices I have as for someone younger. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I love that, especially about um, your mental health. It's something that's not really spoken yeah. about in this field. Mm. And it's something that needs mm. to be um, more, more spoken about. So I love that you brought that in the yeah. conversation. And thank you so much for your yeah. words of inspiration. I hope thank somebody you. is inspired. Oh, and also, yeah, thank you for coming <laughs> on <laughs> and chatting with me. <laughs> thank you so much for having me and for giving me such an awesome opportunity it's been fun it's a great (laughs) place and that concludes our episode for today i hope hearing the stories you were inspired you were motivated but most importantly you learned a thing or two thank you once again for tuning into another episode of the root of the science podcast with your girl and with an e until next time goodbye